This video is about an Elixir library called CacheX. It's a library for caching, but it can also be used for storing data in memory. I'm going to set up a demo Elixir app and go over basic usage. Then I'm going to make a few useful abstractions you could add on top of it. And finally, I'm going to show its real world usage in the app I'm currently working on. CacheX is a library written by Isaac Whitfield. As you can see, it has a ton of different features, but the one I'm going to focus on is time-based key expirations. So let's grab the latest version and create an Elixir app with a supervision tree, assuming Elixir is already installed in your system. Let's get into that folder and pull up the generated code in Atom. Add the cachex dependency to mix.exs file and run mix depths.get from the terminal. Once it's installed, let's add cachex to the supervised children in the application.ex file. Notice that you need to provide the name for the cache in order to use it. Some cache in this instance. Now we can start the application from the terminal with IEX capital S mix. Starting it this way lets us have a console where we can test it out. CacheX works like a key value store, so you can type in cachex.get, pass in the name of the cache, some cache, and then the key you want to retrieve. And it returns, as expected, a tuple with OK nil, since we didn't have anything stored yet. To store something, we run cachex.put, some cache, our key, hello, and the value which could be any data structure you want. In this case, it's a map. Now, when we run cachex.get for that key, we get our map back. We can now set our key to expire in the specified time. In this case, we'll make it 10 seconds. Notice I'm using the Erlang timer module to specify the expiration time. Now I will keep checking the key and after 10 seconds, it should no longer be there. And that is how cache expiration is done. Now let me show you a useful abstraction for this. Let's create a new module calling it cache1 and put it in the cache folder. There's nothing special about the folder name. Let's take the name of the cache and make it a constant at the top of this module. We'll add a get function that will take a key argument and call cachex.get with the cache name. We'll do the same for put, passing in key and data and adding cachex.put the same way we've done for get. So now we have this module cache1 we can call to manage the cache. After recompiling, we can test it out by passing in a key to get function and getting back OK nil tuple. And then using put to actually store some data under that key and being able to get that same data back, we can confirm that it works. At first, this abstraction does not seem to provide much value. Not having to pass in the cache name doesn't seem worth it. What's nice though, is that we can pass in the cache expiration time right into the put function in the module and not have to worry about passing it in separately. Once again, we'll set it to 10 seconds. Incidentally, all the timer module does is convert all values to milliseconds. So you could just pass in an integer value of your expiration time in milliseconds and get the same result. After recompiling, we can test this out on a new key and set in the value to a string in this case and waiting 10 seconds to confirm that it expired. And now it has. So that is what I find useful about this abstraction. But what if you wanted to have another cache with a different expiration? Could we just add this here in the application file as another child? As you can see, no. No, you can't. In order to run multiple cachex processes, we need to pass in a unique ID with this supervisor spec syntax wrapping it. 
So in order to have multiple caches, we need to wrap cache x children in supervisor spec and pass in a unique ID to each one. And after fixing this syntax issue with an extra bracket, we can run the app and confirm that our cache one module still works since it needs the cache name and doesn't care about the ID. And it looks like it does. Now we can create a cache two module for our other cache and change the expiration time to something different, giving us two modules that could be used for short term and longer term cache, for example. I will post the code for the demo app in the description if you'd like to take a look. But now I would like to show you some real world usage of this. This app is called Bellicose. It's built on top of Tradier brokerage platform to be able to easily trade vertical call and put option spreads. So if this sentence makes sense to you, you are able to do it. So when we go to explore opportunities here, one of the first things to come up is historical stock price for different intervals. We have one day, one month, six months, and so on. For today's price, we need the data to update frequently while historical data does not change as often. For these opportunities you see here, there's a lot of data that is required. Even before structuring all these, all the active options are needed, which could be up to 10,000. So it's a really good idea to cache them and not have to fetch them from the API every time. So we'll just select the top opportunity and place the order. Back in the code, these are the abstraction modules I set up for caching. You can see the stock data cache and stock history cache right here. This is where they are declared in the application. It should all look really familiar from the demo app. So back in the app, the stock price is cached in stock data cache module. You can see I have different get functions for sandbox versus real because sandbox prices are not real time. So that is the stock data cache. For stock history, which is the data you get for all these different intervals, I include the interval time as part of the key. And you can see that anything above one day interval stays in the cache for 12 hours. For one day history, I have logic in the code that stores it for five minutes because you want to update the graph frequently during market hours. I could also have used pattern matching for one day interval without having to add conditionals elsewhere in the code. But that is how I currently use cache hacks. As I mentioned earlier, there are quite a few more features in this library. One that I really want to check out is cache warming, which lets you pre-populate cache data, reducing loading time even more. Hope you found this useful. If you're interested in stock options trading and want to check out my app, request an invite and I can set you up with a paper trading account. I will leave the information in the description below. Thank you for watching.